Hi, Dr. Becca here with Del Mar Center for Behavioral Health. I have another short video about information that hopefully is helpful. I get the question from parents oftentimes about, um, my doctor diagnosed my child with autism. Why does the school have to do an evaluation? Or my doctor or Dr. Becca, you diagnosed my child with ADHD. Why is the school not recognizing that? And I think it's important to recognize that there are different classification systems. So in clinical psychology or um, mental health outside the school setting, uh, we use the DSM-5 or the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. And we are in the fifth edition of that. It came out in 2013. I have another video about the uh, DSM-5 changes to from autism to ASD, autism spectrum disorder. So check that out. But um, the DSM has 297 different mental disorders or um, mental health issues that can be used and classified by um, clinicians working in the private sector. School districts do not use this. School districts use IDEA, which is the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. And um, it really is aimed at or, or focused on education. And there's actually 13 conditions that are covered under IDEA. So there's a big difference between the 13 conditions that are part of IDEA that school districts use to classify, right? Because it's important to know that school districts are not diagnosing. They are classifying students. Whereas in mental health, in the private sector, or the medical sector, we are using the DSM and we are doing diagnostics or diagnosing and we have 297 different options. And so that makes a big difference. And so um, one of the, the reasons is that um, not every student who has learning or attention difficulties is going to qualify. And, and I guess I should back up, right? So schools are looking at the educational impact of a potential disability. And so they're looking at these clusters of symptoms and behaviors um, that are adversely affecting the educational performance. And I'm going to say that again because it's super important. IDEA is focused on um, when a child's educational impact or educational experience is adversely affected, and I'm doing air quotes because that's exactly what it says, only then does the child um, legally need and, and um, get an individualized education program or specially designed instruction, which is special education services or EC, exceptional children's services, depending where you are. So again, the school districts are focused only on the educational performance being adversely or negatively affected by symptoms and behaviors. Whereas in the medical field or in the private sector, we're really looking at things that are um, causing a significant impairment for the child across a variety of different settings. Where again, in the school, they are really just focused on the educational impact and whether that's being impacted negatively. So um, the different criteria, the different categories that schools have to choose from or that schools are focusing on or are recognized under IDEA, which is what governs schools, educational settings. Um, there's SLD, which is a specific learning disability. There is other health impairment or often called OHI, um, autism like disorder, uh, autism like symptoms, ED, which is emotional disturbance, speech or language impairment, visual impairment, deafness, hearing impairment, deaf blindness, orthopedic impairment, intellectual disability, traumatic brain injury, or multiple disabilities. Again, those are the only 13 classification categories that schools are focusing on or schools are recognizing in the educational setting. And so oftentimes, let's say ADHD wasn't on that list or oppositional defiant disorder wasn't on that list. And so it's important to remember that a child can be receiving services outside through medical insurance or private pay fee for service um, and can benefit from those supports and the child may not qualify for or need special education services within the school setting.
Doesn't mean they won't, but it means it's a possibility that they may not. So a diagnosis from your medical provider does not always equate to specially designed instruction in the educational setting. And because IDEA is the law that governs schools, special education services, IDEA also specifies what type of testing must be done and what amount of discrepancy or difference from their neurotypical peers there must be. And again, in the medical sector, we are using the DSM's criteria, not IDEA's. And I know that's a lot of um, acronyms, so hopefully you're following. Um, so again, just to recap, and we'll do more on this later, I'm trying to keep the videos short. So um, this will be part one of understanding the difference between educational classification and medical or um, private practice or clinical diagnosing. So um, in clinical or medical practice, we use the DSM, which gives us almost 300 different mental health disorders that we are looking at and comparing a child or adolescent's symptoms and behaviors. Whereas the school district is, or school district school settings follow IDEA, which is um, legislature law, and they have 13 different categories of classification, not diagnosis. Um, because of the differences in regulations and the different focus, so schools are focused on academic or educational performance, whereas in the private sector or in clinical practice, we're really focused on a variety of different settings and a variety of different performances and, and ways of being in the world. Um, it is possible for a child to meet criteria in one setting and not another for the same or similar supports. That can be very confusing as you are learning to navigate the educational setting um, and maybe even the private setting. And so remembering to tag in those social supports that you have, um, calling on parents who've been there before you, um, your treatment team, the school's IEP team, anyone who's available to, and, and really ask um, what the differences are. And, and you are an important member as a parent of any treatment team that is working with your child. And so it's definitely not just okay, but really encouraged for you to ask the questions that you have as you're going through the process. Thanks for taking some time with me. I really appreciate it. Uh, this is Dr. Becca saying see you later.